this video, we're going to solve a problem where there's two different soils with different hydraulic conductivities and water is flowing through. So just a little bit more complicated than the previous example. So here's what we have. We have a water level um, of five meters on the left side and relative to zero on the right side. I'm going to put the data at the tail water right on the right side. And uh, five meters below the data, we have the center line the soil. And the soil has um, two different specimens now in series, one with a hydraulic conductivity of K1 that's four meters long, and one with a hydraulic conductivity of K2 that's six meters long, and K1 is equal to ten times K2. It turns out to solve the problem we don't actually need to know K1 and K2 in terms of finding the total head pressure head, and elevation head. If you wanted to find the flow rate, you would of course need to know those variables. And what we're going to do is find the total head, elevation head, and pressure head at points A, B, C, D, and E. So here's the problem statement. Compute elevation, pressure, and total head at A, B, C, D, and E. All right, now let's make the table showing what we know. We know um, elevation at all five points, right? Because we've assigned the data, the elevation head is therefore negative five meters at every single point. We know the pressure head at points A and B and at points D and E because all of those points have a clear path to a water surface that doesn't go through any soil. And we assume that all of the water is hydrostatic here and hydrostatic here. Therefore, we know everything we need to compute pressure at points A and B and, and D and E. So at points A and B were 10 meters below this water surface. Therefore, the pressure head is 10 meters. Points D and E, we are five meters below that uh, tailwater surface at the datum, so the pressure head is five meters there. Now that we know elevation and pressure heads at point A and B, it's easy to calculate the total head just by summing them up. So we get the total head is five at points A and B, and zero at points D and E. Now, point C is the tricky one. We, we don't know the pressure head at point C because there's no free path from point C up to the water surface. No matter which direction you have to go, you need to go through soil. So there's some head loss, therefore we can't directly use the water surface to compute pressure head. So what we're going to need to do is find the total head at point C first and then back calculate the pressure head from it. So what we don't know is the pressure head and total head at point C. And as I mentioned before, knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know is actually the hardest part of these problems. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Let me know if it doesn't. All right, so here's the solution strategy. First, the total head loss through the soil is five meters, right? We have a differential elevation and water level of five meters, therefore the head loss is five meters through the soil. The total head loss has to equal the head loss through layer one plus the head loss through layer two. So the total head loss always has to equal the sum of the individual head losses within the system. Okay, and the third really important condition that we need to look at is continuity of flow. Okay, the flow going into layer one has to equal the flow going into layer two, right? There's, there has to be continuity of flow as you move through, assuming the soil is not changing volume. So we're assuming the volume of soil, the soil stays the same. If you were pumping water in and the soil was growing, this flow condition might not be satisfied, but we're assuming no change in volume for the flow through one equals the flow through two. Uh, okay, Q is equal to KIA, so we can write K1, I1, A1 is equal to K2, I2, A2, but then we know A1 is equal to A2. There's a constant area. I, I denoted that in the drawing right here, that the cross-sectional area of layer 1 is equal to the cross-sectional area of layer 2. Uh, and then we also know that the hydraulic gradient within layer 1 is equal to the total head loss in layer divided by the length of layer, of layer 1. Similarly, I2 is equal to HT2 over L2. So we end up with uh, K1 
we substitute this equation from 3 into this equation here from 2, then we have everything that we need to solve for uh, HT2, right? So we would get HT is equal to this equation now is going to come here, uh, plus HT2, which was this part of the equation up there. And we can simplify it by grouping, and you get HT2 times 1 plus K2 or K1 L1 over L2. And we now solve for HT2. It's HT over that constant that we have here. All right. Then we can solve for uh, the actual number by plugging in variables, right? I've solved everything in terms of the variable names. Now, HT is 5 meters. Uh, note that we have K2 over K1 here. Um, and we, we knew from the problem statement up here that K1 was equal to 10 times K2. Therefore, K2 over K1 is equal to 1 over 10. Um, so you get the 0 0.1 right there. And then we know L1 was 4 meters, L2 was 6 meters. So therefore, HT2, the head loss through layer 2, is 4.69 meters. And then um, we have this equation for the, uh, let's see, this was equation 2. Right now that we know HT2, it's easy for us to compute HT1. Um, and HT1 just comes out to 0 0.31 meters, such that HT1 plus HT2 is equal to 5 meters, which is the total head loss. All right, then we can plot these variables versus position um, horizontally. So here is head, either total head, elevation head, or pressure head, and position, and I have points A, B, C, D, and E on the x-axis. So we start with elevation head, they were all negative 5. Super boring plot, right? Now we get total head. Um, in the blue lines, it's 5 at points A and B. Then it drops down to, um, this is actually 4.69. Let me carry the significant figures through. And similarly, I'll carry it through on the top one too. This was 9.69. Okay, so we've got our uh, our total headline, right, 5, 5, 4.69, and it drops down to 0 at point um, D. Now all we need to do is solve for the pressure head. And we already had these two pressure head points and these two pressure head points. Now to get the final pressure head point, you would do the elevation head, sorry, the total head minus the elevation head. So 4.69 minus negative 5, and you get 9.69 up there, right? So um, there's our, our diagram of how to get these points, and we can come up here now and write them in to our table. So the total head here was 4.69, and um, we, we got that kind of by interpolation, but we have to consider the discontinuous nature of the soil layering now. And then we computed the pressure head from that, and this comes out to be 9.69, right? So this one was by interpolation, but we have to use some equations to interpolate. And then um, that's the 4.69 that came from the 0 and the 5, basically, plus the continuity of flow. And then once we have 4.69, we can calculate the 9.69. Um, okay, now one thing. The vast majority of the head loss occurs in layer 2, right? So there's a huge drop here within layer 2, not much of a drop within layer 1. And the reason is that layer 2 has a much lower hydraulic conductivity. So if you have two layers that are relatively the same thickness, um, much more of the head loss will happen in the low permeability layer than in the high permeability layer, which makes sense, right? 